Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and today I want to talk about the true story between Axl Rose and Bon Jovi. This is one of the feuds that Axl has had over many, many years. I plan to do more episodes about the feuds that Axl has had and the feuds that Guns N' Roses have had. So let's start with Bon Jovi. So in 1987, Guns N' Roses are touring to support Appetite for Destruction. They're opening for Alice Cooper. This is in December of 87. And Guns N' Roses are staying in Chicago at the Hyatt Hotel. And uh, apparently there was a fan who said that Axel looked like Bon Jovi. And Axel did not take too kindly to this and responded with his fists, starting a brawl in the Chicago Hotel lobby. So the following night, Guns N' Roses were playing a show opening for Alice Cooper, and Axel shared his true feelings. So Guns N' Roses were playing a show in Madison, Wisconsin. And this is what Axel had to say about the altercation. Now last night, what happened was five guys in suits decided in the Hyatt Regency Hotel that we were scumbags. They were right, we're scumbags, but that don't mean we're going to take this shit. So... First off, this guy grabs me and calls me Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi can suck my dick. Second off, he tried to hit me. That's when Steven cracked him in the head with his cast. And his words were, you never try to hit one of the family. Then another guy tried to hit me and I, come here, just, just come out for a minute. Just step out. I can talk to Mr. Mike Mayhew laid him out in one punch. And after that, they kicked us out of the bar and these same five guys holding ice packs on their heads blocked us off in the hallway and called us out again. He knocked the same motherfucker out twice. After that, the cops came and started arresting people that weren't even involved in the fight because they had typical cop mentality. The reason I went to jail was because this real big fucking cop told this 17 year old girl who they were trying to arrest her boyfriend and she was upset that if she didn't shut her fucking mouth he'd kick her fucking ass and she was a stupid bitch. And then he went pretty low, right, for a big fucker. And then he went to hit her. And so to distract him I told him to fuck off. This guy chased me for about 20 feet and then threw me 10 feet into a bar and I wasn't even fighting and it took five fucking assholes to hold me down. People wonder what we write our songs about. I think you can get the general idea when we write a song like... Out to get me! So many years would go by until we would hear Axl Rose and Bon Jovi mentioned in the same sentence. So in 2006, Bon Jovi was doing interviews and he did an interview with the New York Post and he took a shot at Axl Rose. He said, you know what pisses me off? I was reading this British rock magazine this month and there was a story about Axl Rose and the $13 million Guns N' Roses record that was never made. That motherfucker hasn't done a record in 13 years and he gets all that attention. You know what I've done in 13 years? A lot. But they have continued to write about this freak show aspect of him because he's a recluse. I guess that makes him interesting, right? So Axel would never dignify it with a response. Instead, he was too busy in a feud with Scott Weiland, but we'll talk about that in another episode. So it wasn't just Axl Rose that Bon Jovi had a beef with, he also had a beef with Axl Rose's close personal friend Sebastian Bach from the band Skid Row. So if you guys remember Skid Row toured with Guns N' Roses in 91 and 93 as part of the Use Your Illusion tour. But Bon Jovi also had a history with Sebastian Bach. So originally Sebastian Bach and Bon Jovi were actually friends, but then their relationship started to sour. So Bon Jovi famously helped Skid Row get their first record contract and even took the band out on, as his opening act on their 1988-1989 New Jersey Syndicate tour. 
Now, according to Sebastian Bach, he said that Skid Row began to gain popularity and their merchandise began outselling that of the headliner Bon Jovi. So a jealous Bon Jovi ordered him into his dressing room one day and stared him down and said the words, I'll effing own you. Sebastian Bach went on to talk a little bit more about the feud in an interview he did about a year ago. Here's what he had to say. And the Bon Jovi stuff is what is really was the promo leak or whatever well, it was. Well, no, that was like a New York Post. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not bad for the book. No, but listen, again, this was a long time ago. There's an incident that you're referring to in 1989. <laughs> right. We used to have these ends of tour hijinks. And the New York Post headline yesterday is... <laughs> John Bon Jovi's dad threatened to kill Sebastian Bach. There's a nice headline. <laughs> That's right. a great There's headline. a lovely headline. But that, that refers to a very specific incident that happened where I learned if you insult one Italian, mm -hmm. the whole fucking family comes at you. I see. The father, the brother, right. the, everybody, and the road crew. So why'd you insult him? What happened? Because he whipped fucking, he dunked my head in a vat of ice milk. Mm. I don't want to give away the whole book. That's all right. <laughs> Who has ice milk on tour? That's yeah. such an odd thing. It was thing. the end of tour hijinks. You remember oh, okay. that shit where bands would grease up the drumsticks? Oh, I didn't know they'd do that. No, I know they'd do that. Well, them. I was on the road with Pantera once, and I put my mic up to sing, and my my, my mouth starts burning. and oh, <laughs> What the fuck? And I wipe it off my lips, and my eyes are like, ah! And they're all laughing, and they they doused my mic in Tabasco. Oh, that's <laughs> fucking genius. And they go, here you go, dude. And I'm yeah. fucking running out. I'm going, fuck, fuck. <laughs> and I'm trying to wipe it off. It's going in my eyeballs. Like, everybody's looking at the stage. What's wrong with him? Yeah. I'm going, you fucking bastards. How how long did it last? How long were your eyes burning? Tabasco's hot. Like, and you get it in your eyes? I and smelled, you're on stage? Ice milk would have helped, though. A Dunkin' Ice Milk would have taken care of that. Dunkin' Ice Milk would have helped That's everything. That's what they did. I was walking in the stage, Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. Lights were out, and I feel about six dudes just grab me. I don't know what's going on, and just dunk my head and hold me under in a vat of like freezing cold ice milk <laughs> as the first song is starting. Yeah. And I'm supposed to be up there for the first verse, and I'm under the stage. And you know, when you jump into water, it's too cold, you get that vertigo. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> And I run up there in the pants going, what are you doing? But I got milk all over me. But, but you got to read the rest of the yeah. chapter. So in 2012, Sebastian Bach revealed that him, Axel, and Bon Jovi ended their longtime feud. Here's what he had to say in an interview he gave around that time. A long time ago. That was, that, that was a long time ago. Bon Jovi took us on our first tour, and we signed some papers with him that, that he got a cut of, you know, if, if, if we made it big, that he would get compensated for helping us out. Nobody expected us to get as big as we got. Like, nobody thought that that we would become a big band. So, you know, that happens all the time in the music industry. You can, you know, John John is like, we'll take you on tour, you know, but if you guys make it big, then, then he gets a cut of it. So so I was bitter about that for for a while, but then I realized that we probably wouldn't have made it as big, or maybe at all, if he didn't take us. I, I actually had dinner with John a couple years ago. We were staying at the Mandarin Oriental in London, uh, me and Axel, and we were sitting there, and the uh, the waitress says, hey, guess who's over in the corner? We, and me and Axel go, who? She said, John Bon Jovi. And I go, get the fuck out of here. And I turned, he was in the corner, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I was like, because we, we had had, words most of them were mine <laughs> but um so i go you know what fuck this i go i'm gonna go over there and say hi to him because we used to be great great friends i had dinner like christmas dinner at his house and stuff and so i stood up and walked over towards john and john was looking at me going are you gonna be a fucking are you gonna be a dick or are you gonna be nice what are you gonna what are you gonna be and, I, and he's looking at me like what the what are you going to do? What are you going to say? And I was like, hey, man, how's it going? He's like, hey, man. And we stood up. We hugged. And then he came over to me at Axel's table, and, and we drank about 15 bottles of red wine. Had a great time. And uh, he gave me his phone number, and I've texted him a couple times. And he's a, he's a, he's a good guy. He's, we're friends again. 
So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. And here's a little clip that sort of summarizes the Axl Rose and Bon Jovi feud, at least up until 2006 or 2007 before they actually became cordial again. So check it out, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. And be sure to go check GNRcentral.com. We're now multilingual, so if English is in your main language, you can read the entire blog in whatever language is your first language. John Bon Jovi. In a recent interview, Jersey's second favorite son scoffed at aging Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose. In a move pregnant with rock star resentment, Johnny Bon J lashed anti-Axel rhetoric on the pages of the New York Post saying, quote, that mother hasn't made a record in 13 years and he gets all that attention. You know what I've done in 13 years? A lot. He is absolutely 100% correct. He has done tons in the last 13 years. He has made many albums that have sucked. He has done many movies that have not been seen by people. He has had his hair frosted 176 times. That's a busy man right there. Okay, John Bon Jovi is jealous of Axl Rose? That, that's crazy, okay? You know what, John? You know what's wanted, dead or alive? Your dignity. For his part, Axl ignored Bon Jovi's scorn and instead turned his jealous eye to Velvet Revolver.